This NFL picks week 10 edition of the sports game and podcast is brought to you by bet. Three sixty five. Bet365 is offering new users a thousand dollar risk free bet. Sign up today at sportsgivenpodcast.com slash bet365. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. We're also brought to you by BetterHelp. Find your bright spot this season. Visit betterhelp.com slash SGPN today to get 10% off your first month. And we're also brought to you by Game Time. Game Time has last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Use promo code SGPN for $20 off your first purchase. This is Mike Leach, uh, head football coach at Mississippi State, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kram? Dog. Well, I'm back and better than ever. <laughs> Thinking about a guy who used to. Uh, that was work a joke for, for for Sean only. Yes, that's a uh, inside joke of a guy who posted a photo of him uh, not back and not doing better than ever with that uh, uh, with that caption. Uh, All time. Do you think any there's is it possible that anyone else out there that's listening gets this joke? Colby maybe. Colby, but he's, yeah. he wouldn't be listening. Yeah. He's too busy. He doesn't yeah. listen to our show anymore. He has his own people. <laughs> yeah, he's his Colby lackeys are busy doing whatever the Colby lackeys let, do. Let us know if you're one of Colby's chat members and you and you uh, found us through the Colby. chat line. Uh, man, we got a great show for you. Uh, sorry for a slightly late kickoff here. If you're watching live, appreciate you smashing that subscribe button. Smash! Turn the notifications on so you don't miss when we go live. So you can get in the chat, mix it up with us. Uh, yeah, my parents were in town visiting. Uh, did the parents dinner? Had a lot of fun. A couple cocktails, and uh, yeah, ready to go. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I this. For the first time all season, I'll say this, but maybe it's the schedule this week being a little bit off. Feels like the first week where it's like, oof, we're into the meat of the NFL schedule. The meat of the net. Not, well, I, I think not for everyone, Sean. Not mm. uh, you know, everyone knows this, but you know, the lame fan, they maybe take a week off this time of year. Maybe really? they've been getting their ass kicked, maybe their team sucks. Maybe they concede that they're gonna go uh, Christmas shopping with their wife this weekend. <laughs> Maybe they're going to finally bite the bullet. Is week ten the week to do that? Well, I yeah, would well, I would push back. You have a uh, you have a game at six thirty on the west yes, coast. Yes, you got to do your duty. B, you have the per, you have the near perfect, not perfect, but near perfect seven three configuration where God's eye can keep oh, yes. a close eye on the red zone. With See seven, it all seven games all around. And and for me personally, it's it's going to well, be a relaxing week. Oh, it's why is that? Well, because my team, I'm on the Eagles. We're eight and one. We're going into the bye week. We just finished up an insanely stressful, amazing win over the hated Dallas Cowboys. We can put our feet up here and enjoy this bye week. We Truly just, enjoy the bye. Week. We just learned a new concept thanks to Easy. Really? I think it was Easy. And what's that? Well, uh, it's bye week, which means you got more time to bet on other teams. So, is, are you really going to be kicking your feet up? Stress free. Are you going to just have more action? Uh, I think I, with Sean, less action because he always has action on the Eagles. No, not no, not at all. Not this year. No, I've all, the only two times I've actually bet on the Eagles were the two times I released them as my lock. Mm, Other than that, well, growth. and and very proud. And I guess in some ways I have action because me and my high school buddies, our Circa Millions card, we've been playing the Eagles. Every week. Oh, here we go. Part okay, of the card. So, so a thousand dollar contest. You're playing the Eagles every week. So some would say that's action. <laughs> I I guess when you got when you got so many outs and so much so much activity. Producer Josh and I were having the same conversation this morning. And and he was saying kind of the, the opposite of that, which is he's not even handicapping Thursday night football because he knows it's not going to be part of his circa entry. So who gives a shit? Well, Ryan, breaking news. We will be our uh, me and my high school buddies. We'll be playing the Thursday night game because of you. No. Oh, wow. uh, our, our, our buddy Justin, who hosts the Dire Eagles podcast with me, 
He's ter- he's fancies himself a Thursday night football expert. This has happened before to us. It, we we thought we were sharp. We got a couple right, and then you realize it's just not worth it. But but I like that he's disagree. firing. Like that he's firing. I mean, it's working for our team. Why would we? Why oh, would we? Step we, away? we we've been there before. I'm not saying you're wrong right now. I feel like sure. we rarely play Thursday. You're so hesitant we, to play. It. I am now. Oh, we well. had a, a period years ago where we we got we got hot on some Thursdays, and we were fancying ourselves Thursday night specialists, and then we got hit in the nuts one week with some really bad injury news with some games we played, hmm. and that was the end of that. Can't believe you don't remember that. No, don't recall it. It was really dramatic. It might have been like over greater than five years ago though. So <laughs> perhaps you've discarded the information. Yes, I only keep um yeah I, five years. I don't. Look or are you like you- the messages app? Thirty days for Ryan for someone who doesn't like the the rear view. You're certainly looking back pretty far. Oh it, well, when it, when it when it can help inform the future, <laughs> it is important to look back. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. Only then though. So we got a new attitude. And we got a new sponsor here, oh. Bet365. Have you guys signed up for Bet365? I don't know what you're waiting for. If you haven't, start off by going to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash bet365. Get that thousand dollar first bet safety net bet. Uh nice opportunity there. Or you can do the uh bet five dollars, get $150 in bonus bets. And if you're one of our buddies uh in the uh great country of Canada, you also have uh, access to sign up for Bet365. Promos are different. Restrictions apply there uh, with Canada, but again, Bet three sixty five. It is a world renowned sportsbook trusted by over eighty eight million players. They got the sweet profit boost, the payout option, the early payout offer if your team goes up seventeen points. That's kind of a fun uh, thing to get down on. And they really, Ryan, we we were mentioning. Would you it. take that? What do you mean? Would you take that? I think it's I think it's at the price that you bet it at. So why would you not take it? Uh, honorable. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, it makes me way more comfortable betting on the Chargers. I'll say that. <laughs> There's like some teams, teams out there, yeah, yeah where you go. Okay, I might not bet them, but if I have the uh, 17 points, you're up, and they uh, they they got sweet profit boost. I was gonna get to. I was doing some shopping around for the lines for our Thursday night props episode, and man. Uh, I pointed it out. Tommy Tremble is fifty to one first touchdown over on Bet three sixty five when we recorded it. A lot of other places had Tommy Tremble first touchdown 30, 35. I mean that can make a huge difference if you're betting some of these uh, first touchdowns. So great prices over there. A problem gambling call one eight hundred Gambler. Ryan, you know I, I could read the Little Caesars ad read here. I could, but <laughs> I looked at the numbers. We've already so. Part of our agreement, you got to get so many downloads. Shout out to our audience. Shout out to the pretzel crust lovers. They provide pretzel crusts. We provide downloads. Yes, uh, we trade. We trade pretzel crust for ad reads. It's like the the we folks. get mostly paid in pepperoni pretzel crust. We don't. What I'm getting at is we are a no contractual obligation to discuss <laughs> Little Caesars. None. But. And you the hate chat, free plugs. And normally I'm against it, but I am a man of the people. And if the people want pretzel crust, who am I to deny them? So oh I'll my. leave it up to the chat. Do you want to hear the little Caesars well, uh, read? I'm seeing on the screen right now. Before pull up Michael Brock back up. I was trying to do some advanced analytics. 37 pretzel crust pizzas <laughs> in three weeks. <laughs> oh Show man. mercy, oh Sean, and please God. tone down the ad reads. Oh, uh, he's he's asking for no ad reads, but I look wow. at that. That's that's a what that's twelve and one third pretzel crusts per week. Madden would be proud if Madden. Yeah, he's one of those that. guys who will get penetration. He's probably putting in like a solid like half dozen <laughs> on Sunday, and so the rest of the week is pretty easy. <laughs> well, Ryan, as you know, uh, Little Caesars is the official. Uh, so yeah, we've already got Little Squeeze, uh, who is but, but <laughs> his profile icon is a Little <laughs> Caesars, saying, "There's nothing I want more." Uh, uh, Patrick Fisher, thumbs up in the pretzel <laughs> crust read. So we'll give it to you folks because you know you want it. You know, there's someone watching this like, I want picks. Well, my pick, Ryan, for uh, pizza, I'll tell you, Little Caesars, because it's the official pizza sponsor of the NFL. You can order online during our pizza, pizza pregame. I love how they say R because it makes you feel a part of the Little Caesars pizza team. You can get it one hour before and three hours after NFL kickoffs, plus all day Sunday. And what would you recommend ordering? Of course, that Little Caesars. I, I'm going next time I get it stuffed pretzel crust 
pepperoni. That's what I'm talking about. Why? Because everything is better when it's made at a pretzel. Tell me one thing that's worse when you turn it into a pretzel. You can't. You think pizza's amazing? Try pizza that you turned into a pretzel. That goldeny brown, buttery, salty crust pairs perfectly with the pepperoni piled high that only Little Caesars can pull off. Delivery or our in store pizza portal pickup. Grab some friends. Enjoy a few slices during the game. Little Caesars, pizza, pizza. We really should do some sort of photo <laughs> shoot. I mean, we keep talking about having a camera. Oh, the problem is we keep I there's been multiple times where I've ordered the little Caesars pretzel crust. I'm like, oh, I should take some videos and do some stuff for social, and then uh, twenty five minutes later the pizza's gone and I'm just let's <laughs> let's take it seriously. Let's let's hire our, our our photographer guy. Get him a get some proper some glamour shots with the little Caesars. Come on, Sean. And I'm in. second question. Maybe we can get on the horn with the product team. Could we get hot dogs stuffed in the pretzel crust? Yeah, I don't know if Little C's does hot dogs, Ryan, but I'll, I'll I'm willing to ask. Well, they got they, pepperoni. They, well, they got the four quarter calzone, so they figured out how to stuff meats into four different quarters. Pepperoni uh, is literally minced meat mashed together and then cut up. So why not mince it back up to back together and stick it in I, the pretzel crust? I'm confident crust? they could do it. They they can do anything. Don't we have a direct line into the uh, the R and D <laughs> team at Little Caesars? Let's let's get this going. All right, right Sean. Ryan, how's our internet doing? Because I'm I'm seeing that we're a little blurry. Are we blurry? Uh well, you know, shout out to Spectrum. Oh, they, they've yes. been they've been uh, winning horrible for, internet speed. They've been winning for some time now, uh, and and going out of their way to try to screw <laughs> us again. We we don't. I don't think. Whoa! I don't think people believe us all the time when we say we are uh, being attacked by corporate gambling. Yeah. But we are 100% being attacked by corporate gambling. Uh, now I got some. Hold on, Sean. You got to talk for a second while I try sure. to figure this out. <clears throat> Take a look at the internet, Ryan. Uh, while I, uh, yeah, we talked little C's. Man, we got a grid. Uh, <laughs> Were you noticing that you weren't as beautiful as normal? Is that why? Yeah, I was like, man, that Eagles Kelly Green Reggie White jersey usually really pops on the uh, on the pick show, but yeah, not so much. And again, blame Spectrum. It does seem like uh, we're fine, maybe going out. I think it just might be my personal download speed oh, isn't wow. good. Uh, but as I, long as the people, I'm as long not, as we're uploading good and the people are taking care of Ryan, that's all I, the, I care the about. People, I'm a man of the people. Um, we're gonna assume the people are good. All right, uh, week ten, Sean. Yes. I thought I would start uh, a couple notes. Okay. We are back with a close your eyes special. Ooh, how many? Just one. Right? Just one. You're getting. We're not. We'll save. We'll tease it for later. Because it, it would. I mean, really, really gross um, situation we got dealing with. But I, that I did. Is a I disgusting did, act. I know you're a tabloid fan, and so I did want to. Uh, I, I stumbled into something about our lo- our late um, leader. <laughs> Josh McDaniels. Oh wow! Did, did you? I'm. Not, I do not remember this story. I feel like we would have talked about it had we known about it at the time, or I just have no memory of talking about it. Did you know that Josh McDaniels traded Peyton Hillis off the? I believe, I'm guessing it was the Broncos because he thought his his wife was into Peyton Hillis. No, I his did wife, not get that. Josh McDaniels, the, the same wife that said. Jim Irsay's a creep. <laughs> was hot for Peyton Hillis, and that's why he traded Peyton Hillis off the team. Who did he trade Peyton Hillis for? Oh, I don't Here's know. Here's what's fun about this: this man has b- w- very recently was in the fiery uh, news about comments he had made about a couple quarterbacks in the NFL. Jeez, I'm Ryan lost. Clark called him out. Brady Quinn, really coworker of a uh, <laughs> lady DJ and Katie Mox. Wow. Uh, so yeah, fun. I, I just, I, I, I don't even know how I got there, but it was just the, the headline was Josh McDaniels <laughs> trades away p- star player because his wife was hot for him. Anyway, uh, any, you want to, you want one more? Sure. One more nugget. Great nugget. Who, uh, well, it's a question who Sean has the longest winning streak in the NFL right now. The chat can answer too. Maybe the chat can beat you longest winning streak in the national football league right now. Your Eagles eight and one do not have that. Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals do not have that. Should we give something to the to the winner in the chat? Sure, twenty five dollar gift card. Producer Josh knows the answer, so he can we we can let the show go on 
Uh, this is ridiculous. No one has answered the right question. Oh, it might be the Pittsburgh Steelers. We all watch the National Football League, right? Yeah. Chief. Oh, all right. Seven five seven's finest. Uh, Jacksonville. Reach out. Yep. Nice. Hit That's us up. Gr- isn't that disgusting? That's the state of the National Football League right now. <laughs> this is why Colby hates football. Oh, lots of Jags flowing in after. Yeah, nice work. Uh, how should people? Uh, how should people find us? Email podcast at sportsgamblingpodcast dot com. That's called engagement. All right, you want to talk picks? Let's go. I assume uh, you might have a take. Well, at least you're going to have a. W- the fun thing about you being on a contest card that plays Thursday night is that then Sean ends up betting Thursday night, so he can uh, have a little taste of the action. Yes. This Thursday night, this is the kind of game. You listen. You create the Thursday night flex rule. Maybe use it. Carolina Panthers head to Chicago. Wow. I know you can't. It's probably too early to flex it. I get it. Don't tell me the rules. Bears secret agent man. Bears were one and a half on the look ahead. It moved all the way up to uh, as high as four. Settled in at three and a half. I know there are some juiced threes out there, which yeah. tells you enough about what the I market. think it's going to, I think it's going to close sub three. That's what it seems like it's moving to. Do you think so? Yeah. Why do you think it's going to, cause it moved from four to three and it seems like it's going to keep moving because I think originally it was minus one and a half. Uh, cause Justin Fields wasn't going to play. Then Justin Fields was going to play. It moved up to minus four. Now Justin Fields is not going to play and it's trending back down. Well, he's doubtful. No, but he's not going to play. They announced it. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess. Why would the number not like? What's the juice there for? And why are there still three and a half? So the three and a half, like Circa has three and a half right now, as we speak. There's places like like offshore. Like I, I just think I bet it'll be three in the contest. Interesting. You don't think so? I think it could be three and a half. Okay. So either way, I, I think the the idea that uh, this is just our monitor flickering now. We're having all sorts of. Uh, I think the idea that this number a moved two points three like the movement in the first place seemed odd. I understand that Justin Field should bring optimism, but in this matchup, I think if you walk into us, walk into this. All right, we're gonna get Tyson Bajan one more week. Forget Justin Fields. You're still looking at a Panthers team that's insanely banged up. Are we sure this line movement was Justin Fields related and not Brian Burns related? Uh, they're they're going to be without their their stud pass rusher. They're yeah, going to be out huge. without. Uh, they're going to be without um, C.J. Anderson. Their cornerbacks. They're uh, going to be without uh, D.J. Chark, who hasn't done much. But Lavisca I mean, Chenault, tight end Stephen Sullivan, which is just more great news for Tommy Tremble. If you listen to the prop show, <laughs> I mean, I like this game. I mean, I love the Bears in this spot. I like him better with Bajent. Um, because I think uh, Justin Fields with that thumb it is, creates like a crazy amount of turnover potential. Him coming up back off the injury, I love Bajan at home carving up this Panthers defense. Panthers have looked horrible. I mean, their offense has just looked like a steaming hot pile of dog shit. Um, they this really, is their week. No, how so? They, I mean, the, I mean, the, the argument is they're playing the Bears defense. Yeah, but the Bears defense has looked pretty good, especially as of late since they started getting some of their guys back. And we didn't talk about it on the prop show. And shame on us. The angles right there, re- massive revenge spot for Deonta Foreman. Uh, and the Panthers are thirty second in rush defensive DVOA. So you're going to give Bajan a pretty good running game. He's going to square off against Bryce Young. Newsflash: I would rather have. Uh, Tyson Bajan than Bryce Young right now, and I'm not even, uh, I'm not even joking. The Bears also look to get Khalil Herbert back. Well, I mean, Tyson Bajan at least is sized appropriately. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you saw. I mean, it, I, I, I think that a lot of smart people are going to find their way onto the Panthers because of this line movement. Oh, you're a market dynamics guy now, huh, Ron? Oh, I well, you know, I'm completely out on the Panthers. I'm on the Bears, just so yeah. we're clear. I was more just still thinking about your comments. I'll actually, I, I would, I would bet you that it, the contest has three and a half. All right, uh, and I'll I take three. And I think, I think you, you you mentioned the Foreman revenge spot, the DJ Moore revenge spot. 
the the idea that this Bears team, uh, if this is Bajan's last start, uh, they seem to like him. They seem to want to play for him. This is kind of a strange kitchen sink game yeah. for a team that sucks. And, well, and they have like J Mark too. and like J Mark pointed out by beating the Panthers, they improve their own pick because they have the Panthers pick next year. And so, yeah, I love all of that. And I think the, the other side of it is that the be injury report aside, uh, the owner of the Panthers recently fired the manager of his soccer club. Mm. Interesting news to happen at this point in the NFL season. I read an article about it and it seemed uh, basically the critique was this was an odd time to do this. He should have done this earlier. I wonder if this is uh, related. Oh, Frank Reich getting fired. Like he was getting shit for giving this this MLS manager too long, mm. uh, Tepper. And I wonder if the firing of the soccer manager has anything to do with the state of your football mm. team. And maybe you want to send a message to one of your other generals that hey, we got to get things going. I I know this is a rebuild, but you 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 look like ass right now, and we don't even have the first pick, <laughs> and we <laughs> traded away our stud receiver some for some reason to get this this Munchkin. Bryce Young not looking good right now, and I don't. If you didn't notice it on the the original graphic, I did want to get to this because I I don't know if I mentioned it, but Blake Martinez, we brought him up on the show before, former Giants linebacker, then Raiders linebacker, then retired, then he was a millionaire because of uh, Pokemon cards. Uh, then he got turned out to be running some sort of a uh, weird Fraudulent. pyramid scheme, <laughs> and then he's back in football. The Carolina Panthers signed him. Uh, Bryce Young is only four feet taller than Pikachu. Wow! Yeah, so do we? We have official. Uh, was Pikachu at the combine? Producer Josh has combine measurements on <laughs> on Pikachu. We'll yeah, have to dig Frank up the forty Wright, time. Uh, last eleven games, one nine and one ATS. That's bad. That's just not good. And I think you said this er, very early on, but there there is something a little bit more comforting with Bajan on the short week than yeah. it was Fields. A little bit less variance, even maybe. Well, and Fields coming back, there's a bunch of unknowns, and I understood he had some interceptions, but I I, I think he's going to play a cleaner game uh, at home here against the Panthers. All right. So, and, well, Ryan, real quick, uh, we we have to mention the uh, Patreon Pick'em Prize this week again. Oh. If you're if you haven't signed up with Patreon, make sure you get in there for a you got access to all the sheets, and stay tuned. I I could be adding a ladder prop. Uh, Hold on, did you say sheets or beautiful sheets? Beautiful oh, sheets that Ryan uh, <laughs> toils away at. Jesus, it's in uh, the it, come on, it's in the contract. Uh, yes, make sure you sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Patreon. Last week's winners, uh, Greg Kalish and Andrew Cochran, shout out to them, got the SGPN Athletes Pack. This week, it is the Ladder Prize Pack. And, and what reminded me <laughs> that we have to talk about the Ladder Prize Pack is the Tyson Bajan rushing ladder could be active again. We'll see. I haven't seen the numbers yet, Ryan, but. I mean, he ran for what uh, seventy yards last. You think time? those cow cowards will make that available to us? We'll see what they post the price at. Sh but he was eight for seventy last week. I don't know if we'll quite do that, but I think he's. I know it's satire, but we like we're affecting these markets. Uh, we really are. Uh, so make sure you get in on the ladder prize pack. You will get a SGP T-shirt, SGP hat, and an official bird ladder. Uh, which will mayor uh, shout out to CJ Sullivan for turning us on to the bird ladders. And also uh, make sure you put in your picks for the second chance survivor, a shout out to barking dog properties and Corey Pinkston uh, for putting up the $3,000 prize. We're now down to 276 entries. I was kind of surprised it was 341 the week before. I'm surprised that many people got eliminated. Felt this like past a week. shocky week. Well, and I think our audience maybe, maybe got a little cute. We'll get to it when we get our survivor play, Ryan. But I think this is, a, I think a lot of people in our audience, as gross as it is, will probably be on the Cowboys in the second chance survivor because, unlike the circus survivor, where you have that Thanksgiving week where you people want to save the Cowboys, even though the Cowboys are horrible on Thanksgiving straight up and ATS, I, I think some people in the circus survivor will hold on to them. But I think in our Second chance survivor. A lot of people will be on the Cowboys, but if you had to guess, what do you think is going to be the consensus in the second chance survivor? Uh, I mean, it has to be the Cowboys, right? And, and after the I Cowboys, so. I'm not really sure who's next between the Ravens, the Bengals, and maybe Bills. the Seahawks. It, yeah, Bills it, it, in it there. could get split up pretty good. 
I don't know how much I'm dying to play the Bills right now. Kind of feel good that we we burned them out early. There is something to play in teams while they're hot, Sean. A new strategy. Don't overthink it. Play teams while they're hot. Which, by the way, I you're, went. You're talking to a guy who's been riding the Bengals. Man. I went. I went. Uh, I dove into the that the Constantini, the, the cat with the couple entries in the booby prize. Oh yes, we talked about him on the Veasan show. But there was a guy who was tied for last place in Circuit Millions with two Still separate is. entries. Really? Uh, not tied, but I think he's in first and second place for the booby prize for the worst entries, yeah, which has, is so. He, so he max entered five entries. <laughs> you wouldn't believe this, Sean. He's in first, second, and seventh place for the booby prize on the season. Oh my god. His best entry is like three thousandth place. It's <laughs> it's an unbelievable performance. He's picking different games on these cards, yeah. clearly. You have to be. May, unless he I need we need to find this man and we, we are you doing this on purpose, sir? Well, Ryan, make a note for the Vison show. We have to get Derek to give us his information because we have yeah. to have this yeah. guy in the show. We gotta get Constantini on. Well, we'll call a fifteen minute segment on his home. That's actually a great segment. Give us your picks every week. Yeah, <laughs> please. All right, uh, Sunday morning, Sean. We're back. Germany. We're back to Germany. Last time, we have to play football off the uh, the great soil of the United States of America. Patriots, Colts. I mean, talk about the highs and the lows. Going from Miami, Kansas City to Colts, Patriots, and and watch. This will be more of a shootout. Colts. Ah oh boy, that this this is an interesting one to to handicap. Gardner Minshew takes them over to Germany, which is a story in itself. You think he's living in one of those tiny uh, those <laughs> Volkswagen uh, campers? They're laying a point and a half. The Patriots, Sean, uh, drama swirling around uh, Belichick land, craft uh, land as well. And this is from the Boston Globe. This isn't just some crazy uh, like one of those aggregator accounts quote. If Belichick loses at home to the Commanders and then to the Colts and comes home from Germany with a two and eight record, I think there's a chance the Crafts could make the move in the bye week and install Gerard Mayo as the yep. interim head coach for the final seven games. I uh, love it. Uh, if I, I'm Belichick, I'm saying leave me in Germany. I'm gonna get drunk for a month. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, minus one twenty five for the Colts, plus one oh five for the Pats. Forty three and a half is the total. Fun fact: Colts have scored twenty points in every single game this season. Well, and there's that great stat of uh, of um, of uh, of Mac Litter Jones oh. <laughs> of Mac Jones. I was looking for I was looking for McCorkle there. Oh yeah, there you of go. Of McCorkle, how he's like one in fifteen straight up if the opposing team scores twenty four points, which it's, I think it's this a tough Colts, number to get to. <laughs> Colts team could do now. They're without Josh Downs, um, mm. which certainly hurts them, but. I think this could be that Jonathan Taylor game that we keep looking for. I mean, on the other side, the Patriots offense is just so bad. No Kendrick Bourne makes the shitty offense even shittier. Uh, Patriots cornerback uh, JC Jackson not expected to travel with the team because he missed curfew. There's been some issues. I, I, I I'm not trying to even be hot takey, but I think Bill Belichick has lost this team. Also showing up on the injury report, Trent Brown. It's yeah. it's listed as not injury, personal, and then slash ankle. The, it's just all bad <laughs> news. Quote. <coughs> Even Demar uh, De Demario <clears throat> Douglas, the the new the new uh, the fancy toy that everyone got in their DFS lineups last week. He's on the injury report. This is a great uh, report. Mac Jones decision making has quote infuriated people inside Patriots organization. It's just so bad. And we have the hometown narrative. Ryan, are you aware of the hometown narrative? Of course. Bernard Rahman, uh, a bit of Austrian, a stretch, though. Austria, different country. Bernhard Rahman, Austrian native, is the left tackle for the Colts offensive line. His hometown is only a six hour drive from Frankfurt. He's got like 20 people coming out to this game. And I, I just think the Patriots' spirit has been lost. I know Minshew on the road or neutral field, whatever this is, is scary him as a favorite. But look at Belichick, four and seventeen straight up as an underdog, and Mac Jones barely ever wins or covers as an underdog. The Belichick with without Brady numbers just oh, continue to get it worse looks and bad. worse. I, I certainly the defense of Matt, the, the matchup on defense scares you, but they are so banged up. Like you mentioned, JC Jackson not traveling. I mean, Chargers looking like geniuses getting rid of him. <laughs> Justin Ty. I mean, the, the the Patriots literally bought the dip, and he and he dipped again. 
I, I really don't know how you play. Like I took the Colts last week when you were on the Panthers like a fool. What? Were you on the Colts last yes. week? Yes. Okay. Pretty sure. We were you are you sure? I'm one hundred percent sure, Ryan. Okay. I was eleven and, and three uh, against the that's spread. Right. You had a good week last one week. One of my my losses were the Houston Texans. Uh that was <laughs> tough. Uh, the Rams because I thought Safford might play, and the Jets because I'm an idiot. Colts getting 68 percent of the bets. Unfortunately, I think we had even oh, more on the graphic. I, I'm I'm and, out on, on and on the Patriots betting. are one of Germany's favorite teams. So while the Colts do have an Austrian, who by the way, if you want to go watch his interview uh, by his locker, he does give a nice little. Uh, short version of like kind of the key food. Kyle Goodell. The key foods to hit in uh, in Germany when you're there. He goes and uh, pastries and cakes. They're all very good. It's a gr- <laughs> great recommendation, dude. Uh, sorry, Ryan. Troy in the YouTube chat saying, "Did I miss the pretzel crust ad?" Sorry, Troy. You did, uh, but you can go back and catch it. <laughs> Cody said you did. It was beautiful. I just give the people what they want, Ryan. And and certainly. Bye. If Little Caesars is over in Germany, I don't know that, but that is that's prime pretzel crust territory. I mean, Germany is like I don't know if they invented pretzels, but they're that's the motherland for pretzels. Uh, they they definitely lean into loving pretzels. So yeah, we'll, we'll get. I, I they don't have to invent it. It's probably something the Austrians maybe invented it. All right, how can you how can you bet on the the Patriots? That's there? the problem. I'm a, I'm all in on the Colts. I uh, feel pretty spread, good about it. The spread doesn't make. Do you not have? Is this like are people getting a little tricked because it's like oh look at the look ahead was two and a half it's moved it's moved four points Sean why has it moved four points is that too much doesn't matter right no it doesn't matter no I'll just throw it out I pick who who you think is gonna win the game to me it's the Colts yeah they've been I mean twenty points tough barrier for Mac Jones to get to all right normal football time one p.m. on the East Coast ten a.m. on the West Coast got an AFC North matchup. Sean, did you know the AFC North, if the playoffs started today, all four teams would be in. They have a combined 11 losses. Every single division in the NFC, the bottom two teams, if you add their losses up, it is greater than 11. Hmm. That's an impressive division right now. It's a good division. They all play good defense. Meanwhile, two of them are playing here Cleveland, Baltimore, and it's a six point spread, minus 245 for the Ravens. Browns plus 200. 38 and a half is the total. Uh, fun, funny uh, uh, nugget that Josh pulled up is the Browns are, the sp- are spending the third most on their <laughs> offense in the NFL, <laughs> which is amazing. And meanwhile, Baltimore. Another matchup Lamar has owned straight up, but not so fast in the ATS market. So you're gonna, you're gonna have to dive a little deeper. The flow chart's not so automatic, unless you're gonna just come out here and I'm not s- touching Deshaun Watson. Sling money lines. Uh, Baltimore looking ahead to a, a doozy of a matchup against yeah, Cincinnati on on Thursday night. And Cle- th- th- we just saw this matchup. Baltimore has gotten better since then and healthier since then. And by the way, Baltimore whooped their ass then. And and Cleveland has gotten more injured and Deshaun Watson back, who, by the way, nothing more electric than watching Deshaun Watson throw a pass heading into score inside the red zone. Nothing yeah, more electric. Yeah, football. I'll counter though, because I, I think this is actually a decent spot for the Browns. One, last time they played, Ryan, they had DTR. And when yep. you, there is a floor on the quarterback play where if it gets so bad, you can lose the team. And I think that's what happened. And it's fair. I think this is the ultimate look ahead spot for this Ravens team. This Browns defense is pretty energized and we keep seeing it with Lamar Jackson. The fumbling is an issue, even in how well they've looked and played as a team, the fumbling and the turnovers have been an issue for Lamar Jackson. I think they look ahead past this Browns team. This Browns team, and this is one of these weird. You want to talk about flow chart? The road team has actually covered seventeen of the last twenty six games. So weirdly, this is a game where the road team gets up. This is a revenge spot for the Cleveland Browns. I think the Cleveland Browns are going to be much more uh, motivated now. I I I get why you might be scared off the Browns. You, you mentioned the health and the injuries, them losing their tackle. I think uh, for the Browns offense, uh, Jedrick Willis, I think could hurt them. Now Deshaun Watson on the road. I would understand why someone would want to fade him here, but I, I think maybe the Cardinals was a decent warm up game for them. And I think 
I think this is a game where the Browns defense um, makes an impact. This is going to be a 21 17 game. So I'm going to take the Browns and the six points. It, the tune up against Arizona was against one of the worst defenses in the league. Now they face Cleveland's an elite defense, but guess who else is an elite defense? Oh, no, I get Baltimore. it. I mean, uh, dem- it's a tremendously bad matchup. It is, but it's offense. also it's it, also really tough to beat someone twice in the division, especially when you mentioned you even had it, Lamar five and five ATS. Like these are games where one team wins the other one. As simple as it is, there's always revenge in this AFC North, and I think this game goes back to back in the old days. That you just you, when you were handicapping the AFC North, it was very simple: is a dog getting more than three points? Then take that dog. I think this is the kind of game we see Sunday. Both. Tackles will not be out there. Njoku did not practice with a knee. Newsom did not practice with a groin. I, I, I think. No, I mean, there's a reason the the spread is six points, for sure. But I don't think it's moved. A t- I, yeah, I guess what I what I would lean into is I I think this Baltimore team, in spite of these fumbling issues, is taking teams out, out to the woodshed and beating the crap out of. Uh, you look at what they're doing uh, over the last couple of weeks, 37 to three against Seattle, 30, uh, the, the Arizona game was hilarious. 38 to six against Detroit. These are, those were, those are two. And that's a, that's a great point, Ryan. And I think we're, we're, and I totally agree with that. I'm, I'm high on, on Baltimore overall, but you just mentioned two NFC opponents, uh, Lamar, for whatever reason does well, really well against the NFC. Whooping a team's ass twice in division is a whole other thing. We're not talking Eagles Giants. We're talking about a rivalry that ends up being pretty split. And I think this is a good bounce back spot for the Rams. And the Lamar fumbling thing, I, he, they won 37 to 3, but he still fumbled twice. I don't think if he fumble, he's fumbled 10 times this year. I think eventually this catches up to him and costs him a game. Like it did against I, the Steelers. I don't think it's this game, and I think you're. I, I think you're gonna. I think you were focused on the Eagles and not focused on. I guess you. I don't know what you were focused on, but just rooting for Deshaun Watson against a good defense is gonna be horrible, dude. Like everything you. Every, it, it's gonna be like Lamar is gonna make a mistake, and then Deshaun's gonna take well, that. I mean, and, and they, they lost to the Colts outright. Why did? Why do you think that happened? It was a sleepy spot. Against the backup quarterback, it wasn't a divisional matchup. I mean, Deshaun I guess Watson is essentially a backup quarterback. This is a sleepy spot because you think you're no. That I much just better. I completely you beat, disagree that the, you beat the, you're, you're you beat materializing the a look ahead. Spot. It's a divisional game. It's not a look ahead spot. I, it's a I divisional disagree. game. It's not a look ahead spot. No, they're I mean, both five and three. The Browns and the Bengals are both five and three. Th- this to me is more. I, I this to me and scratch. The, if you don't want to go down the look ahead thing, fine. I understand that. I would say this is a revenge aspect for this Cleveland Browns. Okay. That's what I. That's what I'm baking. I'm not capable. Minus six. Love the Ravens. Love. Oh, I know you Ravens. love the Ravens. You got to You got to adjust week to week, Ryan. It's the NFL. Yeah, but the, I don't think the spread has adjusted much off of this team. They. It was. It, what was the spread the first time they played? Minus two. Minus two was it? I don't know. Anyway. I just don't think there's been a huge adjustment to what you're saying. Like the, their, their revenge. Sure. You can have that argument, but I don't think you're getting them out of value. Houston heads to Cincinnati. The other end of that Thursday night matchup, we were just talking about minus six and a half for the Bengals. Interesting to note, this was eight and a half on the look ahead. So it's moved two points across the key number of seven, Sean minus 300 for the Bengals, plus two forty for the Texans. 47 and a half is the total. Uh, producer Josh just updating everyone that uh, not only did he get uh, the Bengals at a better <laughs> price than Dave Portnoy, uh, yeah, I mean that's a horrible price. But, Sharps. I mean, it, oh, talk about trend setting. Producer Josh out there doing it, and uh, gotta love seeing a running back getting kicking points in fantasy. If you're in one of those deep deep leagues, you really hit the nuts with yeah. Uh, Dare Agumboale. Um, jo- the the graphics pointed out he got snubbed for yeah, special teams player of the week. Yeah, why would he not? He's a running back who kicked an important <laughs> field goal in a game. <laughs> they, he doesn't he kick that field goal. They don't win the game. What else do you need from that guy? I'm very interested to hear your handicap mm-hmm. of this game. My, for me, it's like you can look at this two ways. There are an insane 23 people listed on the injury report for Houston. Yeah, 
Uh, five had full practices today on Wednesday. Seven limited. Eleven did not practice. Meanwhile, since he's much shorter, but it it includes Jamar Chase. It includes Hubbard. It includes T. Higgins. Uh, so some key assets on the injury report for the Bengals. Obviously, what's driving the number down? Yeah, and you know we love the Texans here on the program. I I I don't want to alarm you. The flow chart. AK the survivor answer key that we mm. created before the year. We do have and we we agreed that this would be the point where we would start having conversations. I don't recall that. The Bengals are the team we've circled this week. Well, and we we correctly circled the right team, Ryan. Um well, let's start off with the Jamar Chase injury, courtesy of SGPN Football Doc. Back injuries are a bit tricky and can change quickly. Still not overly concerned for Chase. He oh. took a hard fall on his back and is definitely sore. No need to push him for a Wednesday practice. As long as he can get uh, practice in some capacity by Friday, I still think he plays. Now, let's take a look at um, this Texans team. I mean, Baker Mayfield kind of lit up this Texan secondary at home. St- I know Stingley's getting healthy. He's he, limited to He that. might, he might, he might be called up. He might not. We don't know that. But CJ Stroud coming off a massive game deserves to lock up the offensive rookie of the year. But now you go on the road to Cincinnati, a team that is just really filling itself. Now I know they have a little bit of a look ahead spot to the Ravens, but I think Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow is a guy who kind of takes some of this stuff personally. And you know, CJ Stroud, CJ Stroud getting a ton of hype. You- He's kind of the next guy. And now you come into Joe Burrow's house trying to steal Joe Burrow's money. I, 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 and really well, and, and CJ Stroud was able to make the football team and start for Ohio yeah. state. Joe Burrow was not, I you don't, ran, think, I, you don't think there's a little, uh, I now re- it's, it's not quite to uh, Jalen hurts, but, and they, they weren't there at the same time, but you don't think in the back of his head, there's a little revenge going for Joe I, Burrow. I kid you not. I have this quote written down. Cause I just thought it was funny. Again, as I was tro- trolling through uh, Reddit, just looking for nuggets on the bangles quote. I always, I always say I went to school at Ohio state. I played football at LSU. Yes. It, it just made me think, well, guess who played football at Ohio state? The school that you would have loved to play football. Yeah. At, and Joe you Burrow. think you think Joe Burrow's gonna. Joe bitch. Burrow owns Ohio now. You might CJ. Oh, is, you owned it in college, but now my. Ohio is Joe Burrow's territory. Some of your finest work, Sean. This well, you don't think there's, you don't no, think no, there's I, something there? No, I, there's definitely something there. I love the narrative. I'm all I, in on. I it. mean, one, the Bengals secondary or the the passing game against this Texan secondary, and look at the advanced numbers. You can run on this Houston team. I mean, grab that bird ladder because we might be talking about Joe Mixon. Mm. Having himself a game, Joe Mixon. I don't know what they were giving him. Now maybe he went over to Germany and and talked to Tom Brady's guy, but he looked like he got a pop. And really, <laughs> same reason, same reason why I liked the Bengals last week. Their defense has quietly gotten way better. Whatever the I don't have the breakdown of the film and what they've been doing or not doing. Maybe it's just the confidence of Joe Burrow. Maybe it's the confidence of knowing you have an offense that can that can help you out. But man. That that offense, or sorry, that defense for the Bengals looks so much better, and they might fuck up C.J. Stroud. And and C.J. Stroud, this is almost kind of a dump in the Gatorade. Hey, we we overcame it. It was like a Disney movie. You had running backs kicking field goals. It was an awesome win, setting all these rookie records. And now you go into the Hornets' nest. That is Cincinnati. This is a brutal spot. Bengals all the way. So. Just to add to it with some numbers, one I think the reason you love Burrow, even if Chase isn't out there, twentieth adjusted sack rate for the Texans. Meanwhile, Bengals third best on the offensive line side. So and Joe Burrow's looked really comfortable running fully, too. Fully expect him to have all the time he needs to do whatever he needs. Secondly, when you look at the matchup with Cincinnati uh, and their offense, like you said, running the ball against the defense for the Texans. The Texans have the 14th rush defense, a DVOA on defense, while having the fifth best adjusted line yards, which tells me their defensive line is the only reason this run defense is is doing well. Well, you look at the injury report. 
Will Anderson's on there, and, and and a couple other of the the front seven are are noted on the DNP portion of the practice report, Sean, which tells mm. me. To your point, Mixon could go off. I like. I, I just think that maybe it's a Boyd game. Maybe, maybe we're looking at uh, Trent and Irwin or one of your other wacky down the board plays. Because uh, he's going to Trent have- Irwin's stealing catalytic converters. But if he can pry himself away from that profitable <laughs> well, business, he might play a receiver. Strong accusation. <laughs> no, he just lo- he looks like Joe Dirt if and, and he the played slot receiver. La- last thing I'll say is the way that you want to attack the Bengals. We keep saying this all year. You got to run against them. You got to yeah. be able to run against them. And, and what no, the, Damian what, Pierce. What can't the Texans do? They can't seem to run the ball. I, I guess I like that we're getting this number short of seven. Yeah. I, I you know, you know the, the 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 gambler in me is they're they're begging us to lay it. So I'm a little little hesitant here. But yeah, I think I think we gotta go. We gotta go Bengals. I, I hate that we didn't tee that up because I knew the Bengals were our survivor pick. All right, a couple teams coming off the bye here. Bengals, or I'm sorry, Niners, Jags. Jags at home catching three plus one forty on the money line. Niners minus wow. one sixty five. Forty five is the total. Like I said, both teams off the buy. Never fun when both teams are off the buy. Feels yeah. like the buy should be an advantage. There is a chance of rain in this one. A uh, couple nuggets up on the screen. I mean, Brock Turdy, as Sean likes to call him. Well, I was I was also Justin's nickname from the Diary. Oh Eagles wow, podcast. he's a lot of cre- <laughs> lot a lot of shout outs uh, for the Die Hard Eagles podcast. Two yes. and five ATS on the road in his career. Yeah, that's not very good, Sean. Is it time to get a look at Sam Darnold? And this one I'm very proud of because I dug it up. But the Jags haven't covered against the Niners this century. <laughs> That's great. Those are the great ones you see on ESPN. Well, and, and well, I don't have how many games is that? I'm not going to tell you. It is funny because both these teams coming into the season were teams that I thought maybe a little overrated, maybe teams I've looked to fade. Um, and the 49ers certainly coming to roost here with the last three uh, three game losing streak. Jags, j- they've been weird. I mean, because they have lost some really bad spots. But That's then a, I have a <laughs> I have adjusted well, like when picking the games I was on them both times uh, there in London. This is an interesting uh, and I see this set all the time. But the 49ers fall to zero and thirty eight under Shanahan when trailing by eight plus points in the fourth quarter in the regular season or playoffs. Like they are just not a team that can play from behind at all. They it's very like, odd. They got it. They have they are a front running team. Yeah. If you put them in a mode where they just got to do drop back passing. They're going to be in trouble. Yeah. And you would think you would think because my, that trivia question from earlier, because of the Jags winning streak, which by the way, not just a straight up winning streak, they've won five straight ATS. Yeah. What? And yet here we are. Well, and then, and then, but on the other side, like the, the injury stuff, the 49ers are getting really healthy. Trent Williams is back. Debo Whoa. is back. Christian McCaffrey. Trent Williams is not. He did not practice today. Really, I thought he was a go. No, I get again. We're we we we're, we're live in a world where people uh, are misreporting. Can we just get one person reporting injuries? This is this is fucking annoying. I I, I now take some time before the show just to go through <laughs> and search Twitter and just make sure Debo is is in. He's full participant. Uh, Trent Trent is not back. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's big. You also have Aaron Banks, uh, the guard, did not practice today with a toe injury. So that's two fifths of an offensive line DNP. Mm. It does seem like Trent Williams is a huge deal to whatever they they were trying yeah. to do. There's also the theory that Debo is involved in that success. I think it's less about Debo, more about Trent Williams. Well, and, and also there was just a lot of uh, interesting dynamics between the. 49ers defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes and just the the fan base uh Kyle Shanahan the now fuck? they're they're moving him from the booth Breaking to the news. field like why is that a story there's clearly some discontent i i think Shanahan is is struggling to throw someone under the bus and it might be Steve Wilkes i think at 3 man you got to take the jags here i'm going jags plus 3 home dogs yeah, so I I think that's the one weird part about the Jag season is how good their defense has been. Yeah, I said all of these nice things about the Jag. One last thing about the Niners that's interesting too. Wilkes is catching all this crap for not for blitzing too much. Their sack rate is horrible this year. 
I was shocked to find this out, Sean. San Francisco is 28th in the NFL in sack rate. Unfortunately, the Jags are 27th. And so I think both teams could end up having some time. And I actually uh I kind of looped all the way back around because I I I the first 80% of me researching this game, I was in on the Jags. Mm. And then I just thought about, well, let me go back. Let me just do one lack last pass. Let me go back. Who who do the Jags uh, play when they were looking good and who they who yeah. they play when they're looking bad? And that's <clears throat> the Bills, the Bills game is definitely their best win, but it was in ja- it was in Europe, if you remember, in London, yep. bad spot for the Bills. And they kind of got their butts kicked a couple games in a row by the Texans and the the Chiefs. All right, I, I I don't know. I to to me, and this is close because I, I my, instinctively I'm always going to look to shit on the 49ers. However, see that's the problem. I'm I'm trying I'm to trying avoid to take that. A, I'm trying to take a step back and look at it, and I understand the case for the 49ers. However, this 49ers, you can't make a non-conference road favorite on the East Coast at this <sighs> number. You just can't. It's a wrong number. Now maybe 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 the Jags and goalie locks end up throwing a couple picks, but. I gotta see it before I'm back believing in Brock Turdy. Like there, there clearly something was off. Now maybe, maybe he drinks some of that Russell Wilson concussion water uh, that that pads your brain, and he gets right, and I lose this pick. So be it. But I, I'm gonna stay skeptical of this 49ers team, especially at a market high price. Like this is a really high. I, I know they've lost three games in a row, but and minus the three ja- non-conference road favorite against a six and two AFC team. Well, that's a that's a great point, Sean. Because we we need to we need to I need to pause for a second. Then the the Jags have won and covered five straight. Yeah, the Niners have lost and not covered three straight. Okay, accurate, right? Yep. So why why am I I I think I think I've talked myself back into the Jags. Yeah, I mean, so you could say. To right? me, to me, taking the 49ers is the cute play. And this year I felt like I've had success in not being cute. To me, the 49ers is What do you think the play. preseason opener was? Uh probably something similar. Uh, maybe honestly, it's probably less. Jags plus one. Yeah. <clears throat> so the line's gone up since the start of the season yeah. based on what? So you would say like, oh, that's suspicious. That means you take the 49ers. No, but I'm no, not I, doing that double reversal. No, no, that's that's market dynamics. <laughs> You're suspicious when it's six and a half. Yeah. Like earlier with the Bengals. All right, let's do it. Jags. We're going to, this might be the return of uh, God hates Jags. If this goes South, it could be, but I, I would rather go down with a home dog than a non-conference road favorite West to East coast with a Brock Turdy guy. Who who has not looked good? This is like Colby taking a team that runs the triple option. I, I, like sometimes it takes me a couple minutes to realize that this is an emotional play, but I'm still in on it. <clears throat> you hate the Niners. It's great. Yeah. Saints head to Minnesota. They played. They played a big game once. It was fun. It blew our minds. I think we were in my garage. Uh, oh Saints. My God. The Minneapolis miracle. Looking ahead to their bye week. Laying two and a half here, minus one thirty-five on the money line. Minnesota plus one fifteen. Forty-one is the total. The look ahead didn't change, which tells you that no difference between Jaron Hall and Josh Dobbs to the the line. I th- it, well, we're once again staring down the barrel of a Saints game that I have no fucking. I, I, just, I, I they're clearly a good game. Yeah, or a good good enough team. Well, and they get it done on the road. They're, they're, which is weird. Laying two and a half is again one of these dicey numbers. So Min- minus one thirty five. Forty one is the total. I, uh, I, it, it's so like handicap and stuff like this. It's interesting because immediately I can think of five great reasons for both sides not to take them. Right? Because look at the look at the Saints reasons. Uh, perfect reasons not to take them. One, they've kind of just looked like dog shit even when they've played well. I mean. They turned the Bears over five times. They won the turnover battle by five and still barely uh, beat that Bears team and didn't cover the spread. In- inefficient in the red zone, as usual. And, and Derek Carr is a favorite, 18, 35, and two, worst quarterback last 20 years. Don't want <laughs> any part of that. Uh, and But then on the other side, Josh Dobbs, I mean, they nicknamed him the Pasture Knot. This was literally Disney movie stuff of. 
they were explaining to him what the receiver was going to do in the huddle. And I watched the video of him going hut hut hike. It was, it was an awesome story, but we always see this Ryan, right? In the same way the Texans had their emotional fairy, fairy tale game. We saw this with the Vikings the emotional fairy tale game. We saw it with the Raiders, Antonio Pierce, greatest coach of all time. Well, uh, we'll see one how week, one week sample, but yeah, we'll I mean. see how it, the game after the game, which is handicapping one oh one, That's where things get uh, weird. Now the Vikings have struggled with slot receivers. So uh, Rashid Shahid uh, has an interesting matchup there and you're going saints are on the road, but Hey, guess what? It's in a dome. Where Derek Carr thrives, um, you know Cole Komet has had some good game ha, or had a good game against the Saints. Maybe Hawkinson gets going. I just think there was a lot of adrenaline, a lot of energy, a lot of um, just mojo that carried this Vikings team to that win, to that cover. I think I'm going Saints here. Yeah, you doesn't have to. feel great, but I'm I'm going. Saints. We're gonna do some basic math. This was a two and a half point line before the season. Kirk Cousins is worth way more than this move. Period. The, the, why is this not three and a half? Because like it's that. the Saints. Because you people like, like me saying I can't fucking take the Saints at that number. No, they're they're not a fun team to bet on. But why is all. this not three and a half? Like break it to uh, Derek Carr. Well, because they know they won't get any uh, bets on the Saints laying three and a half. I mean, look at the Saints. What they did when they went into I, Indianapolis. I think this line closes at least three. Oh, maybe it does, but I'm saying. Yeah, I'm with you. Look, look at what the Saints did when they played the Colts. Similar, I mean, is is Josh Dobbs? I know we want to. No, this is the worst. I know we want to send him to the moon, but is he really that much better than Gardner Minshew? No, I I as as soon as last week happened, I said, well, we're fading Antonio Pierce and Josh Dobbs next like, week. Yeah, that's just that's just the way it that's the way it works. So not a ton of handicapping here on this one, but. I also wanted to come in and all right, I guess the saints are a good team. And if a good team is playing a potentially really bad team. And I, I think also this could be a massive Kamara game. I mean, if there, if, if Flores, if the Vikings defense plays the way the Vikings defense has been playing, yeah. Alvin Kamara is going to have a shitload of check downs. A, a lot. I think the slot angle that you spoke about, like a lot of runs a lot of stuff. Slot. Out of the slot, he could also have a big game. So yeah, I mean, this we could be talking about the Saints and DFS once again. Yeah, well, and 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 I know Minnesota's defense has gotten better, but uh, Josh Dobbs also remember when he beat the Cowboys, and then what happened after that? Not much. Uh, yeah, I, I had it. I had it pulled up earlier, but he just the, 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 the memory of him is not like the memory of Josh Dobbs doesn't match the win loss output. Of Josh Dobbs. No, and and I I don't think this will be making our circa millions card. I'm gonna pick the Saints, and oh. I'm I'm not gonna bet this. <clears throat> See the chat. Someone in the chat, I'm sure, is telling us you're supposed to take the two and a half, Sean. Not like. <laughs> All right, moving along. Um, oh, Ryan. Before we do that, uh, reminder: this show is sponsored by Better Help. Oh man, end of the season always tough. You got the holidays, which is supposed to be fun, but then it creates all this pressure stress, travel, family, family dynamics. Uh, it can really, really take the fun out of the holidays, which it's supposed to be fun. You're supposed to enjoy. I mean, the in-laws, maybe your in-laws are a pain in the ass. Who knows? Whatever it is, uh, it really can create a stressful time. The end of the year, maybe you got financial goals. You got to hit uh, quarterly stuff for your work, whatever it is, it can get really Really tight. Uh, luckily, though, therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress, the change, just the the, the toughness of the holidays. And again, uh, if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. I mean, you're listening to this, you're you're skeptical. Hey, just give it a try. I think you'll trust me. I think if you're if you're thinking about it, it's definitely worth it. Uh, it's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you gotta do, fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Think of how many of your favorite athletes have also seen a sports psychiatrist. Uh, there's no shame in it, and it really can uh, do a lot for your brain. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com/sgpn today. You get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com/sgpn. And Ryan, time for. Our prize fix segment where we talk about what we want to do when it comes to more or less. And of course, sportsgivenpodcast.com slash SGBN. 
hundred percent deposit match over a prize fix. We won last week because we're winners. Yeah. All you go two and zero, oh, you cash three x plus three hundred. I'm down for that. What are we looking at here, Ryan? Are we mechanical parlaying? Well, uh, no, that's uh, that's not what. Sorry, we're doing. are we mechanically taking our winnings from last week and reinvesting them? Yes, I like that's the I, I like the reinvestment strategy. But maybe we maybe we stick to this uh, Vikings game with the Saints. We didn't even mention it. Justin Jefferson probably not going to play. Quote yeah. might be a little aggressive to yeah. get him out there this week. So that to me is is no. We could go Derek Carr. He's got two forty six and a half passing yards. Go over. Uh, I that would be the only way I could play that. Okay. I, against this Vikings defense, they're gonna blitz. There's gonna be a lot of passing yards hidden in Alvin Kamara, like negative a dot catches. This to me, I think there's a couple ways. Alvin Kamara to score a touchdown. That that's certainly an interesting. Uh, if you want to get that on the card, you can just yeah. Let's uh, let's do the over. Uh, I like the over Derek Carr two forty six and a half, aka more. Um, and so sorry, you said uh, you, you like the touchdowns. If you if I'm playing Kamara, I'm I'm probably gonna play his. Either receiving yards thirty five and a half. Okay, well, because you we need someone. Well, then we would need someone from a different team. Do we want to include Kamara and make it a three? Yeah, let's go three x. Go okay. Kamara receiving yards. So we'll do a stack. Wait, Kamara receiving yards yeah. or touchdowns? Oh, uh, what do you like better? You, your I, choice. Dealer's uh, choice. I'll go touchdowns. So go. So right now we have Derek Carr, more two forty six and a half passing yards. Alvin Kamara more a half uh, <laughs> touchdowns. And then I would say, I, I like the idea. <clears throat> they don't have Dobbs up right now. Well, they, they're they're calculating his uh, his numbers. They got the slide ruler out. Classic. Uh, I would, if you're asking me to do something, I would probably look to play. Wh- who do they have? Do they have anyone listed in like a tackles market? Oh wow, you're going deep here. Right? Well, I'm just thinking if Kamara, if we think Kamara is gonna look, gonna get gonna get a lot of junk, maybe he's getting tackled a bunch. Or I think the other side of it is I would play. So Cameron Saints. Cameron Bynum, the free safety for the Vikings. Oh, what's the number? Tackles and assists six and a half. Let's do it. Okay. Over. More, Higher. More. 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 All right. Hunt, hunt, hike. So a uh, we go ah. three and O oh on this Ryan. Twenty dollar entry turns into one hundred bucks. Prizefix.com slash SGPN promo code SGPN. All right, back into the old streets. Game number five on the early window. This probably looked a little bit better before the season. Packers versus the Steelers. Two massive fan bases. I guess the Steelers fans are probably a little happier than the Packers fans right now. Steelers laying three, minus 165 on the money line. Packers plus 140. 39 is the total. Steelers catching 83% of the action. Mini buy for, for Tomlin off Thursday night football. And boy. The numbers that were circulating about uh, the Steelers and their yardage differentials, their point differentials, minus thirty. Sean, point differential minus seven ninety in yardage, which is impressive. Meanwhile, if you go, if you want to have some fun, go look at the EPA, CPOE, and just in general completion percentage for Jordan Love. Nerd! He's he's comically bad, and if you really go dive deep. Uh, he's getting some of the most time in the NFL. So that that's generally a formula where if you have time, you should do better. He's not doing that. And you add in the injury report it looks a lot better for the Steelers than it does the Packers. The only real question you have is has George Pickens put the Steelers stuff back in his social media profile. <laughs> he said he keeps social media and football completely separate uh, new policy right <laughs> after the game. huh? I mean, you could have had a touchdown. He, he said it was unrelated. But this is what makes me feel. This is like when guys go to rehab for like <laughs> sex addiction. It's like, come on. They uh, they they obviously asked Tomlin about it. Tomlin had some great quotes this week. I, I caught a bunch the, of them. I'm fucking working here. Yeah, he he did. Uh, <laughs> Got to resurface that. Someone video. was asking him about uh, Kenny Pickett, and he's and about how much he struggles in the first three quarters. And he goes, "Well, why don't you point out how well Kenny Pickett does in the fourth <laughs> quarter?" You know why he does that? Because he cares about this team. He wants he wants to be a part of this victory. Talk about Kenny Kenny Pickett's fourth quarter rating. 
It's through the roof. It's over a hundred. I will work on the other quarters. He said he's so good at these press conferences. Uh, they asked him about George Pickens drama. And he said, quote, it's a pebble in my shoe, to which <laughs> compare, I mean, you know, if Antonio Brown is a boulder, George Pickens, certainly you could call him a pebble, man. My God, this is a Steelers all the way. This is I'm pulling my, why is it only three? What's left out of my hair to try to understand who the fuck is taking the Packers plus three. <laughs> Uh, Minka, oh, we're so predictable. Make well, come on, but <laughs> it's minus three. Make a fits pat. Make a four. Make me think. If it was four, I'd be thinking. I'd be thinking sports book. But I had three. I mean, three is essentially you're picking the best team. Steelers are such a better team, especially at home. Jordan Love has he looked good against a good defense? Nope. Of course not. Has he looked good on the road? Of course not. He's looked horrible. Some will say that Aaron Jones being back will make their rushing attack better than it appears on and, the paper. And certainly will help the offense. And Ryan, you were high on Aaron Jones coming back last week for some prop stuff. I was like, eh, skeptical. Again, I wanted to see it. Guy's electric. He did look he did look good, but the fact that the Steelers have Cameron Hayward back, I like that for them. He is practice. I mean, he's limited, so j- I guess keep an eye on it. Make sure, but he. I guess uh, I. I mean, he played last week. I think, and and it sounds like he he didn't get any. He didn't pick. It up wasn't. Yeah. So and they're coming off the Thursday bye, so they're probably taking it easy with him. The Packers do have Jair Alexander back, uh, which should help their defense. But and Minka Fitzpatrick is out for the Steelers, which does hurt them if you can throw the ball downfield, which the Packers can't do. Is Jair? So Jair Alexander didn't practice today. But he played last week, right? True, but I I didn't I noted it down um, because it didn't look like it was a rest thing. Okay, so either way, it's not impacting. Shoulder shoulder did not participate. Steelers have played forty three consecutive games without reaching four hundred yards of offense. You know why? <laughs> they don't need your stupid yards. They nope. got T.J. Watt. They and Jay, their running games look looked really good. I mean, Najee Harris, I thought was. Looked really good against a decent Tennessee rush defense, right? They, they, it's it's funny that the Steelers and the Iowa Hawkeyes have the same colors. Oh, I mean, come on, similar vibes yeah. all the way. Just you don't need to score a lot of points. Maybe they should put a uh, clause in Canada's contract, like uh, like Brian Ferentz, and then fire him, but let him finish the season. <laughs> that that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, I, not only that, but the 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 Packers, a uh, couple a couple linemen on the injury report, um, DMPs. Quay Walker. DMP. Oh, you don't need those against TJ Watt. They'll be uh, fine. I'm just, uh, just saying, like Packers very banged up. P- Steelers not nearly as banged up. Don't really understand the ha- handicap here. I'm gonna feel like a real donkey if if Green Bay runs all over Pittsburgh. That's the only way this can happen. That's I don't understand how it happens. Otherwise. No, but they and I mean that was the plan for Tennessee. But we also love the Steelers. Things. We also love the Steelers. Right, it's, and it's, 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 I've been taking the Steelers. I think every week. <laughs> Which sounds crazy, but they're five and two ATS. So who's the crazy person? Yeah, they might cool off at some point. Be yeah, careful. but then we adjust. I, I, David right. David Corey saying, "Do we back Tomlin as a home favorite?" Yeah, if it's if it's short, if it's short. Again, it, it's we're yeah. Sean nailed it. The, you're, it's it's not three and a half or four. You're not thinking this is this is a uh, gentleman's pick'em. All right, next up, Tennessee, the Titans, little back to back road spot here. They're coming off Thursday night football as well against those Steelers. They're heading to the road to Tampa, take on the Bucks. This game's a pick 'em, Sean. 38 mm-hmm. and a half is the total. Interesting how much respect the Titans are receiving here, considering it's Will Levis. And I think you throw out the numbers. It's Will Levis against Todd Bowles. I don't want that. I I I want nothing to do with that matchup. Mm-hmm. They, they are going to smother the run. They are going to make Will Levis beat him. I understand that they're missing a couple, a couple, a couple cornerbacks, uh, not practicing for the Bucks. They just got roasted by the Texans. Ooh, you like Tampa Bay, huh? I get all of that. I don't know. Now, in two weeks in a row, we've seen. I don't know if I can get behind Will Levis in oh, a situation. I love Will Levis in okay. this situation. Really, very high on Will Levis. I thought his eyes downfield were very well, looked very good to me. It was less about what I saw in Will Levis, and it was clearly what the other Tennessee Titan players oh. saw in Will Levis. They respected that guy. They went to war with that guy in Pittsburgh. Now they came up short. 
But they did lose, yeah. They did lose, but they lost with honor, as Vrabel often does. And I love fading this Bucks team. I'm out on the Bucks. That was a heartbreaking loss for them. This quietly could be an interesting game DFS because I think Mike Evans could have a good game against the Titans as well. And I think DeAndre Hopkins and some of uh in particular, uh stay tuned for some ladder talk on the prop show. But Kyle Phillips, who we identified maybe as a guy to get that anytime touchdown, and instead he racked up a ton of receiving yards. He might be ladder worthy as the Bucks have really struggled against slot receivers. And we already saw them get carved up by a rookie not just one week ago. Slightly uh, different class. You think so? Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, I I'm I I'm willing to early early results, but I really liked what I saw. I think you watched him on the road in a rock fight in Pittsburgh, not blow the game. And I think I'm I, what I'm surprised. I about, saw him ball out at home against a decent Falcons defense as well. Sure, I'll give you that. But what where I'm looking at here is I'm I'm just purely looking at a matchup where I'm gonna get a t- so two things. One, Baker just shredded up. Houston's defense a little bit. Sure. This Titans defense is very shreddable. Yeah, I, I do so, think I do think Mike Evans has a good game, and I do think that could be the reason they cave. To me, the matchup that I and it's less about Will Levis or Baker Mayfield. To me, the matchup that I think really solidifies it for the Titans is their eighth and rush defensive DVOA, and the Bucks need to run the ball to win the game. They still they they still are very run heavy in obvious rundowns, AKA first down. And they were able to do that against the, against the Tennessee or uh, sorry, the Houston Texans Rashad white had a really good game. I think they're going to struggle in that same situation here, put Baker in some unfavorable third and longs, second and longs. And that's how you beat the bucks. You, you slow down the run enough. Why did the Eagles uh, beat, beat them up? Well, one, the Eagles are a much better team, but two, they were able to stop the the bucks on early rush downs and, and put Baker in bad spots. Baker was in very favorable spots in that Houston game. Now he played well, but you, you put Baker behind the eight ball and that's where he gets in trouble. Or maybe, you know, maybe he Baker, might like an eight ball. He might like being behind the eight ball. Yeah. I guess you're, you're uh, yeah. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I, I think you can, a lot of what you can say about both teams like like the the argument works for both sides I think in a lot of cases here. And I think you're right to think that Tennessee could could create some havoc for for Tampa, but I also think Tampa's going to have some big plays. And I don't know if if Tennessee I mean Ten- it, Tennessee didn't exactly shred uh I I've said shred now like three different times. Uh, <laughs> they haven't exactly scored a bunch of points uh, the previous week like, I mean against the Steelers defense. So I I I don't know that you can be so high on Will Levis in this spot that yeah, I understand being out on Tampa, but I yeah. I don't know how in I am on Tennessee. Right, and it's not like they're to me this You're is, very high on Will Levis. I I I thought I I've said I think I might have been wrong about him, hmm. but I don't know if I'm I, I guess I guess going in and beating this Tampa team is not some massive accomplishment in my mind. No, but they're going to pressure him the same way that Pittsburgh did, and, and that, I thought that he was did, a problem. I thought he did oh. well against pressure. I, he made a couple of nice throws, but I think yeah. down in, down out, he kind of lost his way in well. the second half. So, and again, I th- I think Tampa is going to be able to put up more points than that Pittsburgh offense. I, I think just vertical passing is exactly what Tampa does well. Yeah, and I would also uh, and having those extra days to prepare. Uh, for the Titans with the rookie quarterback, I think will be helpful. No way Baker loses to a guy who puts mayonnaise in his coffee. Last early game, Atlanta, Arizona. I told you I'm out in Atlanta, Sean. That's it. They've spurned me for the last time. They're heading to their bye week. Oh, uh, who wants I've to already, bet this game? I've already said bye to them. Really? Minus one and a half. Well, minus, Arthur Smith said bye to the mustache. Right? You said it was a lifestyle. Oh, well, uh, you don't just switch your lifestyle nine weeks. In. I, I guess uh, that is kind of what the kids do nowadays. Yeah, they, uh, the you know pronouns here and there. Minus one twenty on the money line. Plus one hundred five for the Cardinals. Forty two is the total. Kyler's back. This is a funny game to bring Kyler back for. Uh, yeah, or especially the whole the thing's fun. Call of Duty uh, also comes out this <laughs> week, so we like right in the face. Like it's almost as if they plan this and. Uh, Producer Josh with the great nugget Bijan, uh, aka the reason for that long press conference. Bijan only one carry inside the 
five yard line. Well, when you get the when you get the uh, Jonu Smith jet sweep ah. as Jonu Smith fantasy owners, Ryan, we, 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 I love the, I love the play <laughs> calling from Arthur Smith. But real quick uh, side story here: odds, uh, Pro Bowl quarterback Kyler Murray's team, if not the Cardinals, twenty twenty four week one. Who do you are, are you aware of these odds at all? I've not looked at those odds. Number one, Patriots at uh, plus five hundred. Number two, Titans at plus five fifty. Don't see that one. Don't see that one. Not with the current. Yeah. No, because they got. I mean, they they're getting some forward momentum with Levis. Yeah. Why would they go back? Why would they set themselves back? Yeah. That, I, that doesn't make sense. I don't see it. Number three, Giants no. plus six hundred. No. Number four, Falcons. I, Set plus seven hundred. I, I know where he's going. Oh, really? Should I stop the list? Dallas. <laughs> he's from Texas. <laughs> oh man, it, oh my God. that is a good one because he's not listed here. You could see Jerry Jones falling in love. Get with rid him. of Dak. The yeah. Contracts match. Kill two birds with one oh. stone. Young spry Kyler. <laughs> Fuck yes, please. That's a good one. If there is a lord, what are their odds? Uh, they're not here. It, oh. Commanders nine to one, Steelers nine to one. I don't see either. Uh, I will have to send an email. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Commanders and Steelers, and I would say Commanders, Steelers, and Titans. I feel like fairly. All right, let's see. They're fairly okay with their quarterbacks right now. If you are from Bedford, Texas, do you root for the Cowboys? Hmm. Cody from uh, TAV in the YouTube chat saying he's going to the Rangers. <laughs> you might be right about him going to Texas. Well, he can, he can play both teams there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bet Bedford is a suburb of Dallas. Mm. He grew up a Dallas Cowboy. That is a disgusting act. Now, now we know. So this game is really weird because matchup wise, the Falcons, what do they do? They love running the ball, regardless of game situation. Cards are 30th in defensive rush DVOA. This is Arthur Smith is gonna stand be before the media after this game. Oh, see, I and told be you. so right because he puts up 38 points well, running it, Cordero Patterson, Tyler Algier. And B. John Robinson like 15 times each. Well, we had a great uh, C.J. Sullivan pointed out to me. I missed it, but the uh, Arthur Smith press conference where he went out of his way to go. And you know how long it takes to build chemistry with your quarterback. You know how long it takes to get on the same page to build that relationship to have that connection. And then meanwhile, they get beat by Josh Dobbs, a guy who literally didn't know any of the plays, the players' names, yep. the snap count, whatever. Oh, it was really chef's kiss for him to lose that. So thanks for uh, pointing that out. CJ from the bottom line bombs podcast. Falcons have just been horrible. ATS five and 15. I've tried to talk you out of them, Ryan. I'm out of them, but now like a bad pair of pants. I'm done. But, but on the other side, it's so bad. Don't the you public dare. is on the Cardinals. Don't you dare. The first time the public, the Cardinals have been a public side this season. Oh no. Is this time? Oh no. I mean, could Kyler look good? Uh, yeah, let me see what the uh, I got I got to pull up these splits. Make sure you're not uh, It is very it, well, so per per Vison betting splits. Hey, the, check out our show on Vison, 9 o'clock Friday night West Coast time. Atlanta Falcons 69% of the bets. Really? So, I don't know where you're getting your data mm. from, Sean. But sourcing from here makes me think that I don't. Is Kyler gonna? What do you think he's gonna look like? I forget what. Small. Ky, I, yeah. Besides small, what do you think he's gonna look like? You think? I think we just watched Josh Dobbs have some success against Atlanta. Yeah. Was that just purely the lack of the ability to adjust to Josh the astronaut from Jaron Hall? <laughs> If Jaron Hall doesn't get concussed, do they win that game the same way? Probably not, right? I mean, I I I or like you're, the, you're you're in the mindset that it wouldn't have mattered. Well, I I, I mean, if Jaron Hall scores that touchdown, I, I don't know. I I thought I <laughs> you're I a lot happier if he scores the touchdown. Yeah, that would have been a nice cash. God damn it! How do you get so close to that? It was such a tease too, <laughs> and his rushing ladder, the motherfuckers. Um. I don't know what to do with this game either because they, if they run the ball 50 times, they're going to win the game, Atlanta. Right? Yeah. yeah, I guess I'll go Cardinals just because it's funnier. We assume that Kyler's going to look better than Clayton Toon. Why? <laughs> Part of that was the offensive line. 
Yeah. Kyler hasn't seen live. No, but Clayton Toon was pretty bad. But to your point, he hasn't played in a long time. Oh, we've seen this before. What did Deshaun Watson look like? You don't have live game reps for a while. I and guess the team and the I, team doesn't like him. Wait, so we're laying we're laying uh, one and a half. I can't take Atlanta. I'm off Atlanta. The the Arizona Cardinals. But you just your whole handicap was Atlanta. Yeah. So you're just gonna you're just gonna lay all that information out for other people to. No, use. no. I was just pointing out like the 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 stats and the matchup stuff point to Falcons for sure. It does. I just seem don't like think they're a good good team. I don't think either one of these teams are good teams. But I'll take the chance that Kyler Murray looks better than we think and pulls out a victory. So yeah, give me Arizona plus one and a half. All right. I'm I in. mean, I think they held him out because they think he can come back and this win is, this, this game. is the soft landing. Yeah. That would be excellent. I mean, they could get a couple wins, make sure the giants do hold the tiebreaker over them. So they're going to need to get an extra win over the giants. Fortunately, the giants will not win another game the rest of the season. Detroit heads to Los Angeles to take on the chargers. We're now in the afternoon window, one Oh five on the West coast. Detroit laying two and a half coming off the bye. Minus 125 on the money line. Chargers plus 115. 48 and a half is the total. 84% of the bets, Sean, on Detroit. Massive public side here. <clears throat> it's the most heavily bet team on the on the card right now, as we sit, Sean. And and um, you know, you would think maybe the Chargers got a little respect after the game last week. Defense no, showed up. They didn't look that good. Look ahead went from minus one and a half to two and a half for minus one and a half for the Chargers to two and a half for the Lions. We've we've had this a couple of times this year where you have a team on uh, maybe a mini buy, maybe a full buy going against the team coming off Monday Night Football, so d- disastrous scheduling situation. Yeah. And then you you sprinkle in Detroit looks super 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 healthy. So yeah, and and I think. Detroit has looked at its best when they have David Montgomery, like that physicality. Uh, you've seen Jameer Gibbs had a had a really nice game for them as well. I think they're going to be able to throw all over this Chargers defense. I mean, that was the issue with the Jets. There there were guys open, they just couldn't get him the ball. I understand um, the Chargers pass rush. Joey Bosa and crew, Khalil Mack had a very good game against the Jets suspect offensive line, but now the, the lions, they get Ragno back. They have a very healthy offensive line. They're going to get Jared Goff some time. Goff has been great in indoors last two season, 19 and six against the spread. I think, and I just don't think Justin Herbert has looked particularly good. He's still dealing with that thumb issue. Uh, Sam Laporta that's ladder potential there. I think he is a very good matchup against this uh, chargers defense. We saw our boy Tyler Conklin get six catches. I think Sam Laporta uh, could have a nice game here. I think Lions are road chalk for a reason. They deserve to be. They're going to get the win and the cover. I hate uh, this. I do not like this spot because it makes too much sense. The Lions are getting healthier. David Montgomery, who we circled as a player that kind of makes this team really yeah get to the next level. I don't see the angle. Don't I'm with you. We've also loved to fade the chargers at home and take them on the road. I know we've strayed a little bit from that this year, but I'm, I'm in on, I'm in on the, I'm done fading this lions team. Now they're if, if this is going to kill me when Herbert comes out, has a flawless game against Jared Go- Goff, the return of Goff to SoFi, Sean. Yeah. Will the, the lions low key, I think could take this stadium over. Oh, but I more think... more so than like the more so wow. than I think they might get credit for, like the, like Pittsburgh Steelers style. Yeah, and I I think they're yeah I I think not quite Steelers Nation, but I think they will have a good uh, turnout. Lions are excited. They, this they have not been good in a while, Sean. When a team when a franchise has not been good for yeah, a while. if you're a Lions fan, you're dying for a reason to travel to a game, and why not make it L.A in uh, November here when it's probably cold as shit in Detroit, yeah, yeah, probably a you're probably warmer. just surviving on that Detroit uh, deep dish uh, pizza from little C's um, shout out to the chat who wanted me to do another little C's read. I, I, sorry guys. I appreciate it. You can go back and enjoy it. Uh, it much like the pretzel crust uh, pizza. It's here for a long time. Uh, and uh, also shout out to Mr. Heat in the YouTube chat. He was trying to find our Friday night show. If you have YouTube TV, which you probably do, because you have Red Zone and NFL Sunday Ticket, uh, 
Don't like, tell us if you don't have Sunday. Yeah, ticket. we don't. If uh, you don't have Sunday ticket, what are you doing with your life? Personal. Just put in uh, sports gambling podcast on YouTube TV. You can search it. You can record it. It's pretty easy to find. Can't miss it. Uh, it's on Vsin, but search sports gambling podcast on YouTube TV. You'll be good. And, and I also think there is something to kind of we're pretty li- we're getting later in the season, so having that full extra week of rest is, is going to be meaningful and probably a decent advantage. I, I'm with whoever said it earlier in the chat. I'm I'm not I, I was I'm I'm can a little bit surprised this isn't a little higher. Uh, next up, why are they putting this game in the afternoon window? They're gonna make uh make everyone is this some, the America's game of the week? Mm. Hopefully it's not the Giants back to back road spot. Heading to oh Dallas. God. Dallas, uh, no, no surprise. Public as hell. Uh, thank you, Josh, for letting me know the draft is in 169 days. Looking forward. Hmm. And I did get excited when I saw the Cowboys signed uh, Martavis Bryant. He was an old uh, fantasy crush of mine. Giants, unfortunately, Sean, are a close your eyes special. Really? Tommy Why is DeVito. that unfortunate? Tommy DeVito. Because I don't think they're winning a game for the rest of the season. Oh. I don't think uh, this this number moved from ten to sixteen on the look ahead. Uh, I I unclear how they're going to compete in this game, but I am a slave to the close your eyes special. The only trend <laughs> that I bend the knee to. Giants plus sixteen. Not excited. Ryan, why not? We I gotta, don't want them to win. We got a hundred. Oh come on, you're not that tank. Guy. You are not that guy, Ryan. I'm on the tank train. Are you talking? And are you? So I thought you said you weren't into the NBA. How can you be in the No, no, I'm just I'm I'm doing my tank oh, okay. bit. Sorry, I'll next time I'll wear a tie dye and my Colorado guy. <laughs> I like your Colorado guy. Tom, you have noted Italian American Tommy DeVito with an oh. entire week to prepare. That is noteworthy because he has not actually practiced a single day that, with the I mean, I'm kind of kidding, but I do think that will help him. And the Giants defense has shown some life. The offensive line has played better. If Daniel Jones didn't sack himself and tear take out his ACL in a non-contact, I mean he had plenty of time on that play where he blew out his ACL. That's the irony of the Giants. What are you talking season. about? He blew it out on a play or two earlier. Like the 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 controversy is oh, why the okay. fuck was he let back in the game? Oh, okay. clearly tore his ACL on an earlier play because he just went down. I mean, you watch the play. That's the kind of thing where it's like he was already hurt. Oh, he, and it just buckled. Yeah, he he, put, he tried to put weight. So on are it, it we done. calling out the Giants' medical staff? Yeah, Anyone I am. But I, I want to know how that survey gets done. That they're such a top-notch <laughs> crew. First Graham Gano, now Daniel Jones, <laughs> the best player on the team. Andrew Thomas is back. So shout out to the medical staff. This is the well, he Giants' had a setback halfway through. Oh, is he not playing? I thought no, he was no. Playing. I'm saying he was. He missed way more. They let him play for a quarter and a half with a torn half, for three quarters. Don't. Yeah, we need a full investigation. Fire someone. For yeah, fuck's I, sake! I'm I'm worried you're you're living through the, you're living your your issues with the Giants' medical staff and their injuries is tainting your view of other teams and how mean? they're dealing with their injuries and banged up players. What do you mean? Well, I'm saying I have trust in the Eagles' medical staff, and I understand why you wouldn't have trust in medical staffs because of your because of how no, the no, Giants I, have, I have trust in medical staff. I want this one investigated because they showed up very <laughs> high on that uh, internal survey they posted. Woo, it's and yeah, and you're you're going to be super pissed at the Eagles medical staff th- that they let Jalen Hurts play through this when he it finally snaps all the way. No, I I thought um yeah, I mean he played a really good game, played through some pain. Shout out to You're Jaylen not going to be happy if something bad happens that they've been letting him play through it. No, I would never be happy if something bad happens to Jalen Hurts. I or anyone in the NFL. I don't wish yeah, injury so on anyone. That's where I am. I'm not happy with. Uh this is the Giants Super Bowl. It's a close your eyes special. Take the Giants and the 16 points. Ryan, can the Giants do us a huge favor in the circuit millions? This that would, would, that would be hilarious. This would really <laughs> as, No, they can't. Ryan, this would save the Giants. Gotta get a top two. Pick. This would save the Giants season. Do no, they have it? It absolutely would not. Is there anything. fire in any of those fifty-three men's bellies? Uh, hopefully, hopefully Tommy DeVito goes down to Dallas, takes his big dick out and Big D, and I'll, slaps it all around. The I'll way they, wi- I'll be willing to take Dable off the hot seat if they it, get this. You want to know the, the the reason they win this game? Sure. There was like grown man irritation at how they were being clowned in the first game. So if you want to talk about a revenge spot of like just grown man being embarrassed that they got their ass beat the first yeah. time, maybe that's it. And the way this happens is what Dak two pick sixes. 
Defense is going to have to come up with two touchdowns. That C- would be the prediction. Serial pointing out uh, Dallas is zero and one as double digit uh, favorites so far this season. No, that's right. They lost to Josh Dobbs. Could <laughs> should have traded for Josh Dobbs. Passed or not, he was available. Ryan. That's that's the buddy cop movie. Josh Dobbs and Tommy DeVito. Oh, that's fun. Hey, maybe you want to uh, head head to this game, watch the Giants upset the Dallas Cowboys, cash your plus seven hundred live and in person, and uh, you can do it. Still tickets available over on Game Time. Game Time is the place to go. Lowest price guarantee. Lowest price. Lowest price guarantee. Event cancellation protection. Um, they got you covered. Uh, easy to find tons of tickets and it's not just sports stuff. They also got your concerts, comedies, whatever you're looking for. They got you covered. NBA is back NHL. So many good things to see live. Perfect. Uh, you know, take the lady out to a, uh, out to a show during the week to hang out with your boys on Sunday, take the Gumad out on Friday, whatever it is. It's so fun to go out, see live sports entertainment in person. Uh, you can get the images of your seat before you buy. Again, that low price guarantee is clutch, and the flash deals are really lifesaver as well. Already adding on to the low prices over at GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code SGPN for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create the account, redeem the code SGPN for twenty dollars off. Download GameTime today. Last man tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. Ooh man, love Hall of Fame Bets. Always use that before getting down on any parlays, DGen or not. They are the official DGen parlay optimizer of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Uh, just so, just it's just so convenient. Whatever sort of prop you're trying to look up, hey, how many, how many uh, times is Tommy DeVito thrown for a passing touchdown? One. Okay, so you can. It makes it really easy. You don't even have to ask Kramer. You don't have to ask me. You don't have to look up all these reference sites. <laughs> Hall of Fame bets does the heavy lifting. Stop betting in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame bets to craft more intelligent data driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame bets app or visit hrfbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame bets. Livingston, New Jersey. Definitely some Italian Americans there. That's where Tommy DeVito's from. And uh shout out to everyone that thinks it's cool to make uh racist remarks about Italian Americans on the internet and 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 uh, mock Tommy DeVito as if he's a mobster just because someone else was named Tommy DeVito in a movie once. 125 in the West Coast. Washington the Commanders. Uh, turn that again. There you are being racist. What? Towards Italian Americans. No, it's about Italian Americans succeeding. You know the it. Italian Americans <laughs> helped you Irish filth. Oh come on! When you were licking gutters in the streets of New York, fucking suck on a potato, Sean. Washington, back to back road spot. I would. I love potatoes. Yeah, very bland. Uh, back to back <laughs> road spot. Sorry, it doesn't have your gravy on it, right? Uh, you need oil. You need some olive oil to fry it in, you motherfucker. Commanders on a back to back road. I don't spot. know why people think you've been angry on the show. Who's angry? <laughs> Seattle at home minus six, <laughs> minus two seventy on the money line. Any any, any games around the Giants before after forty five and a half is care. the total. I'm just standing up for myself with your your uh, your anti Guinea takes. Seventy percent of the money on Seattle. Probably going to be rain here because it always rains in Seattle. Sam Howell four and one ATS on the road in his career. Absolute dog. And if you missed it. He was asked about the loudest stadiums he's played in. After stating that the Broncos were the loudest stadium in the NFL, he's like, "But there's been louder stadiums in college." Oh, where where is that, Sam? Oh, Blacksburg, Virginia, for sure. Really? So shout out to Sam Howell, giving the nod to old uh, Metallica. So Blacksburg. I, I think I think what's, what's happening. What's the handicap here? So for me, this is easy, by the way. Okay. Seattle by a million. Well, and and I think Seattle who I was on the whole Gino's uh, writing back, he sucks, and I think a lot of that is true. However, <laughs> this is the game. However, the the market has thrown off what we think of him in general because he played now granted they played the Cardinals at home and he had some bad turnovers there, but they still covered by 10 uh or, or one by 10 and covered. 
But then he played the Browns at home, tough spot because the Browns defense oh. brings it. And then went to the East Coast against the Ravens. Again, oh. Ravens firing on all cylinders. Top two defenses, DVOA, right? There. Yeah. So you could see why the Seahawks, you're buying them actually at a low point with this number. Now, this is a commander's back to back road spot. It's the commanders, AK Redskins coming off a win. Hate that spot for them. They, I think people are thinking like they look good. They look bad against the Patriots. Like the Patriots had some wide open guys. Uh, and, and I think this is an awesome DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett game against this skins defense. You'd think there'd be some opportunities to go, go over the top. Yeah. Now maybe the skins backdoor this, but I have to take the Seattle Seahawks here. Have to. Yeah. Uh, it, strong play. I mean, again, the public is sharp this week, Sean, we're, we're aligned with the public for the most part. And I, uh, Washington has kind of been Washington all year. And, and if not for the Mac Jones game and the giants game, like what is this Washington defense been? They'll let you, they'll let you pass the shit out of the ball. Seattle's yeah. going to have a game here. I, I don't know how bullish I'll be on their running attack, but Gotta lay the points again. I I'm gonna have a weird teaser this week. I think might might have some six point teases down to pick them. That's not very exciting. I, any concern that Sam Howell just balls out? I also I, here's the other thing I'll say. I I think also this defense continues to to grow. And I while there'll be opportunities. What defense? The Skins? No, Seattle. Okay. I, I think I think Sam Howell is going to make some good plays. They're going to put up some points like they have. I think Seattle is going to turn them over, and they will be opportunistic as he's given opportunities to a lot of teams. They will yeah. take advantage of them. So, a defensive touchdown maybe in this game. I like that. No, okay. this is a this is Pete Carroll's been up their ass the entire week. This is the Seattle Stadium's going to yeah, be their rocking. ass beat two weeks in a row. I mean, yeah, I I no, think well they won the week before, but. It was not a good performance. Sorry, you're right. They came back and won that game. How? Uh, still don't know how th that game is a loss to me. Browns won that game. No, I mean, yeah, it's weird. Wild ass comeback. All right, Sunday night. Again, they had an opportunity to flex this one out, but they said no. Nope, we want Zach Wilson against Antonio Pierce and Aiden O'Connell. Jets off on the short week. Got the got. Not a good game. Chargers to do that to you. That that's not a good look. Minus two and a half went down to minus one for the Jets. Minus one twenty on the money line. Raiders plus minus one oh five. Thirty six is the total. <clears throat> Here's the problem with this. Th there were a couple of games this week that you were never playing anything else but the one side, and this is one of them. This is the this is the bounce. The the dead coach bounce doesn't keep. I was going told up. that wasn't real last week, Ryan. Uh, in hindsight, uh, I would love to see this game played uh, without Tommy DeVito, uh, with a with a healthy quarterback. Maybe things change, but yeah, no. I mean, the, the dead coach bounce. If it happens one week, sure, maybe. But well, icing on the cake: Antonio Pierce and Jeff Saturday, when they worked at ESPN together, used to trade coaching notes and nuggets. <laughs> so. So uh, occasionally, though, we do see teams rally around the interim head coach. Uh, you, you remember Rich Basaccia? Yeah, that's a good one. Steve Wilkes. Sure. Steve Wilkes is in some hot water now, though. No, but I'm saying, like, uh, they were a bad team. They brought in the interim coach. The interim coach won them over. So, what did Rich Basaccia and Steve Wilkes have in common? Calming force in the locker room, yeah, not inciting a, a revolution. Well, yeah, I mean Antonio Pierce. It's a different vibe. That's I, I think it matters. I think not not to like bring it into a, a world outside of sports, but I think in, through transition, one of the things is they to bring stability. Well, and bringing stability, bringing a calming force, bringing someone that will listen. And I, I I don't I think the attitude of Antonio Pierce works as long as they win games. But the second they start losing games. You know, ripping cigars in the locker room starts <laughs> looking a little different. Yeah. You know, having, uh, I, I, it's so funny, but having a group dance like session before they start practicing looks stupid. So, sure. I, I'll, I'm, it's, it's crazy to take Zach Wilson on the road as a favorite. But here's the handicap. Ready? You ready for this one, Sean? Strap sure. in. Jets. If you're a Jets fan, two things are true. 
one, you probably don't take too many vacations or go see many away games, but you decided this year you got Aaron Rodgers. They're playing in Vegas. Great time to have a trip. You're already pot committed. You're not canceling the flight. You're not canceling the hotel and you're not canceling your plan to Vegas. I think the jets are going to randomly have a shitload of fans in Vegas. And I also think, I mean, more or less, can the jets stop the run? Yeah. Yes. Totals at 36. If they stop the run, what happens to this Raiders? Team? Well, I just the, the Raiders defense against Aiden O'Connell, I think is an amazing matchup. You mean the, or, Jets, sorry, the defense. Jets defense against Aiden That's O'Connell I mean. is a, is an amazing matchup. And I thought the Jets played Justin Herbert really pretty well. I mean, why did they lose the game? Well, one, the Jets fumbled four times, and then two, they let up a punt return for a touchdown. Now, that's kind of what the Jets do, so it's hard to take that out of the handicap, but if they don't I did give it out as first touchdown, so I had it actually yes. in the handicap. So so if the Jets only fumble twice and don't let up a punt return for a touchdown, they might have won that game. Uh there's some great outlier stats on the Jets. Uh the Jets have not had a touchdown drive of longer than one play since the Kansas City game. All three of their touchdowns since were one play drives from Brees Hall. 72 yard run, 50 yard pass, and the eight yard run where the Eagles seem to let him score. So interesting uh, stretch that they got going on here. Jets are also the only NFL team in the N in the Super Bowl era. Always a great stat to have their defense collect five sacks, hold the opponent to under 200 yards, and not allow any 25 plus yard plays, and yet lose the game by 20 plus points. So if we can get a similar Let's performance from that defense, I don't think the Raiders get the win. The Jets defense is the best unit on the field by a wide margin. Give me the Jets. And, and their pass rush will get home. I, I mean, again, I, I think was it last week or the week before we talked about the Bryce Huff prop? I certainly would look towards that one again if they're dangling it. They do seem to be uh, I noticed that the IDP streets also liked them after I uh, spoke about them on the show, Sean, but yeah, this is gross. We're laying point. How many favorites are we going to take, Sean? Oh, I have some dogs. Uh, so do I, but not a ton. Not too many. I'm starting to understand why you took Cleveland. Keep keep the balance. Yep. Denver heads to Buffalo on Monday Night Football. Buffalo getting a little uh, public zest here. 74% of the bets on the Bills. It will be rainy in Buffalo. Orchard Park, I think, is where they play. Denver coming off the buy here. Very interesting. I know a lot of uh a lot of the sharps are looking their way towards the Denver Broncos and the points here. Uh this number opened bigger than seven and a half. It's uh now come down to seven and a half. Minus three seventy five on the money line. Broncos plus two ninety five. Forty seven is the total. <clears throat> yeah, the Bills haven't uh, not having covered since October first is, is is getting pretty wild. We're starting to get to that point where we're wondering is or is Buffalo just going to be a paper tiger this year? Yeah, I've been I've been uh, I thought you were with me on on being out on Buffalo. I was. I I thought they would you thought it was a spot there. Just thought they were going to show up for that spot. They didn't. Joe Burr, congratulations. No. Thank you. Um, Denver Broncos two game winning streak going into the bye, which is <laughs> crazy. Uh, but the the They're Broncos. Back. Well, no, I do think I think. Uh, as much as you're joking around, I do think their defense has been pretty good. Now, some of that was some, you watch that chiefs game. Some of that was some fluky stuff. And then the game before that was Jordan love who, who really sucks, but they're getting some guys healthy playing a little bit better, a little bit of confidence. And this bills team is just the exact opposite. Like they are so far up their own head. Uh, no Matt Milano, as we've mentioned a number of times, really the difference maker on this defense, he does seem to matter. <laughs> Josh Allen keeps his interception streak alive. He's with the Hollywood starlet. They're, Is that the are, problem? Well, they're just pressing. I mean, look, I've never seen Josh Allen so rattled in press conferences before. And you know, Russell Wilson on the other side, he's got like the Scientology thing where it's just like this weird vacant uh, yeah, thing going, no but they, they have a little bit of momentum going. I'm tempted to take the Broncos here in the points. Do you think the Broncos are any we haven't looked at any futures markets. Any should we be looking at like the Broncos to make the playoffs? Is this <laughs> Well, I guess if you think they they can win this game, but that's kind of what you're 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 at least saying you like the points. Yeah. 
we, we we often say that the Bills do a good job of of mopping the floor with the crap teams. The the Broncos have a pretty tough schedule though. So it's at Bills, Vikings at home, Browns at home, at Texans, yeah. at Chargers, at Lions, Patriots at home, Chargers at home, Raiders in Vegas. So I think Broncos to win the division seventy to one. Let me see. The, <laughs> let me see what the pl- <laughs> that, that oh does not God. seem uh, not seem feasible. I'll take them. Uh, and the under has been red hot in these primetime games. I'll take. Uh, I'll take Denver plus seven and a half. This this Buffalo team is just off mojo wise. They just are. What, what do you think it is? Like what they Denver Broncos to make the playoffs is eighteen to one, mm. which is bigger than the money line. Yeah, money line's only plus two ninety five. <laughs> AFC is tough. I I I know it's eighteen to one. I would rather put it on Tommy Tremble uh, first touchdown. Sean was Sean. That pa- to me is a better chance. Of I didn't it. go and pull the Sean Payton off the buy. I feel like Sean Payton was. I don't know if any Sean Payton historical stuff applies. This doesn't to count. This team, but they're, he, they're he in is a funky zone. He, he, if you believe he's a good coach, he certainly. This would be the time you'd see the most change in the team coming off the bye week. Yeah. I don't like. I don't. I do not like taking the points in this spot because it's going to look so foolish if we're if we're wrong. We're going to look so dumb. But I. I felt good fading the Bills. On this run now, maybe I'm taking it one game too far. Yeah, give me Denver. Fuck, yeah. fuck, I hate this one. Not, it's not making the card, Sean. Kansas well, City. I mean, you know, it could it it'll probably be a game like the Bucks game, right? Where Bills are controlling it. No reason the Bucks should be. No reason the Broncos should be in this game. There's like a fourth down where they ha- they have a stupid yeah, play. It's, There's it's, a random fumble. And if anything, the Denver's has a better offense. So, yes, Kansas City, Philly, Miami, and the Larms are all on by. So Eagles, Chiefs next week. Oh yeah, Monday both, night, both fresh. Andy Reid off the bye. Mm-mm. Let's go, Ryan. Time for everyone's favorite, the lock dog and tease. <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> what do you got, Kramer? You went first last week. We went five and zero, so you're you're going to be locked into first for a while. It feels like lock number one. Oh, all right, I I I do need to I need to sit and just take take a moment, take a breath, because I I had an idea what I wanted to do. By the way, Chicago is if we if we're talking about Chicago at three, that might might have been the first Thursday night lock. All right, I'm ready. Baltimore minus six. Dog. Should we go Giants plus uh, plus a million? Uh, I I do not have a lot of juicy uh, activity here, but I am in the camp that thinks maybe the league has started to figure out Brock Purdy. Yeah. Give me the Jags plus one forty on the money line. Tees. Is teasing the Bengals down just stupid and reckless? Why? Yeah, let's do it. I mean, I don't think you'll need it, but I don't think it's reckless. We're also gonna tease. Oh man, I, I this is not a great teaser week. Anyone that tells you differently is just full of it. Uh you're not even supposed to wrap. Th- I'm I'm completely lost here. Give me the Cardinals. <laughs> I, I'm not teasing the fucking Cardinals. All right, you know what? Baltimore tees down to pick them. Seattle tees down to pick them. Lock up Seattle. Let's get out of here. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, for me. Uh, you nailed the handicap. Market dynamics. Seattle massive low point yet. No, I I like Seattle. Uh, all right. First, you got to do it. Pittsburgh minus three. It was always going to be the Pittsburgh See, Steelers. It did. It it was. It wasn't going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers for me. I. I really. I like them. I'm. I'm happy they're on the card. <laughs> I think. I think there's a decent chance the Steelers will close. Could close north of three. They should. Hmm. That would be my guess. Okay. Um, for my dog, I do like the Browns. I do think they're a live dog. 
But I, I don't want to go against your lock, Ryan. Go for it. Uh, I dare you. This game won't be close. Really? Deshaun Watson will cost his team. Like there, yeah. there will be defensive. Touch. Guess I'm not dying to bet on Deshaun Watson. He was he was looking dicey against an easy defense. All right, give me the Denver Broncos plus two ninety five on the money Whoa. line. Whoa! That at Don of Bills Mafia, Adam Pelletier is going to be very unpleased with that pick. Well, what I mean, they're all just short favorites again. There's not any other interesting dogs. Yeah, no, I agree. I I, I concur. You know what? Actually, I'm going to go New York Giants plus 700. Massive letdown spot for the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and it's a close your eyes special. That's what we do here, Ryan. It's true. Yeah, I am seeing that it has gone to 17 in some places. <laughs> All right, for my tease, I'm with you. Take Seattle to a pick like that. Um, take Cincinnati down to minus five or minus a half. And then uh, last but not least, I'll take uh, Jags up to nine. That feels like a good tease for my second lock. Mm. I do like, uh, I really like Tennessee. I don't, I, I don't want to influence you, but I, I would, I would share with you what my almost lock was going to be. What was it going to shock the world? The New York football jets. <laughs> yeah. I was on the jets last week with my dog. I mean, it's a great spot. Oh, you just, got burned last week. That's yeah. Why. I'm, scared. It's I'm scared of touching the jets. Do I make it the bears, right? You love the lions. What else did you love? You like the Bengals. You like the Colts in Germany. You had the local hero playing before 20 of his close friends and family. <laughs> Oh man, the second lock is tough. There's there's a bunch of stuff I like that's fading, close. Fading Josh Dobbs is an interesting take. That's yeah. also probably close. That's probably gonna get make it to my. F- I like that. This is the longest you've gone without uh speaking. Give me the Detroit Lions minus two and a half, Ryan. It's a good time to fade the Chargers. They've been they've been winning ga- It's it's a weird Chargers team we're receiving where they're winning games that they like that Jets game. I don't know if they should have won. Are are we so I, I have a I think we're gonna be potentially on Sports Gambling Podcast Live on VEASAN talking about the Detroit game where it's three. Are you still loving it at three? Yeah. It doesn't really change my opinion. I don't care about it. line movement. What about the Steelers? Three to three and a half? Don't I, care. Don't care. Love it. Circus Just the fucking number. No, I, I, I bet teams. I don't bet numbers. Fuck the, fuck those idiots that say the opposite the for people, our circus survivor. They're going to be so mad at you, dude. Why? That it that, doesn't, they're going to be, they're going to get so angry with you. It's the NFL. You pick who wins uh, for the circus survivor. We're going with the Cincinnati Bengals, Ryan, any final, final words here. Ne- did good either spot. of us put it, put Cincy in the teaser. Yeah, I did. Okay. Good. We both did. Oh, okay. Good. I okay. mean, I could make Cincy my lock too. But I locked him up last week would be so the only reason. We're, I there's nothing else to discuss. We're saving the Cowboys for later in the season. Yep. Um the other big spreads Baltimore, Seattle, we've already used. So we don't have much to think about. No, it's an easy decision. All right. And that's why Buffalo, when the Giants, we already, we also Giants went on the money line, it's gonna be glorious. Oh, I mean it would be great if I think I don't think they're gonna be super popular because of that Thanksgiving game. I do think a lot of people are planning to play them against the commanders. So for our circa millions, uh, Ravens minus six, Seattle minus six, Steelers minus three, Lions minus two and a half. And I feel like we got to go Jags plus three. Are you forcing a dog? Not forcing, but I'm okay. trying to think of what else we agree on. So uh, in consideration, I, mean, I don't, I don't feel firing good on Arizona. Thursday night for the first time. Oh, yeah. I, I like playing that too because I think that's going to be three or two and a half. Really? Yes. Two and a half. I would I would bet a lot of money it's not gonna be two and a half. You think it's gonna be two and a half? Well, I would why'd say it go why'd it go from four to three already? Brian I think I think Brian Burns is part of this move. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. So I would say we go Chicago, Indy, Jacksonville. I mean, we agreed on a lot of stuff. New Orleans, also, I'm intrigued by. Jets, like I said, that's I'll I'll probably be wagering when we get to the circa. I'm sure I'll be wagering on on the <sighs> Jets. But yeah, let's go Jacks. Yeah, we a dog's always good. You and your uh, your. St- your, your, weird, your weird leprechaun luck. <laughs> so, Circus Survivor, Bengals, uh, Kramer locking up the Ravens in Seattle. I'm locking up the Lions and the Steelers. Giants on the money line. You There's sure a- you want to lock? You want to finish with that? Yes. Jags right. on the money line for you. Three team <laughs> T's for Kramer. Bengals minus a half. Baltimore pick. Seattle pick. I'm going Jags plus nine. Cincy uh, minus a half. Seattle pick. Nice. Yes. All right. Feels like a good show. Hey, uh, so get the get the Patreon pick them going. They got a chance to win the, that ladder prize pack. That thing is uh, awesome. And uh, what else do we got going on, Ryan? We got uh, we'll be back tomorrow talking college basketball and props. Yeah, we got college basketball in the morning, or I guess afternoon for most people, and then uh, probably around ten thirty on the West Coast. Then yeah, normal time props. But CJ back. We got the ladder on set, so. Who knows? He he's probably gonna find a way to up the ante. Yes, look out Hopefully. for a we giant can, ladder. We can only hope. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second Money green. He's Ryan. Well, back to back double lock. Let's go. Kramer, let it ride.